Where's the one? Welcome back, class. Yeah, where is the one? Yeah, where's the uh, one? Yeah. Are, I whispered it sensuously you into your quiet, ears. You can't, you can't quietly throw to somebody if we can't see you just right. <laughs> yeah. I said one. one. I thought that was my tinnitus. I said right, one. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back, class. Uh, this is Y Caliber. We are playing Strike in Eberron. Uh With us today, well, there's me. I think I'm here. I'm Steve. I'm the GM. Uh, we also have Smug, who's playing Moktesh. Hey. He's not here. No, I'm here. No, I don't What's think up, you are. Yo? Normally he's all Can't he's hear. all for getting attention, but then I, suddenly, yeah, normally no. I am at <laughs> twitch.tv slash caffeinated smug. Maybe you'd uh, like to come by and watch me play The Witcher, which I'll be doing for the next four months at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got D Davis, internet celebrity, playing Frazzle Fuse. I sure am. And I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. That's actually internet celebrity D Davis, not the other way around. Oh, and where where can we find him at? Where can we find him? Twitch.tv. Somewhere in Philadelphia, I think. (laughs) Now, is there any truth to the D standing for Dong? No. You're not Dong Davis? No. And we also have Jared playing Rook. Yep. Yes, we do. And uh, Mike on Garex. Hey, y'all. And your gracious host, Matt Arp Smug, playing Depp. Yeah, I'm not Smug. Yeah, you just You're said Arb Smug. Smug. I'm not to smug. <laughs> I said Arb Smug. Are we becoming Arb the smug. same person? <laughs> <laughs> They're fusing. Oh God! I'm doing a fusion dance. <laughs> I teach all the mat. All the mats are just becoming one singular mat. We got to yeah, do a yeah. fusion <laughs> dance, Smug, yeah, and we'll turn a, into like Smart King. Linked by the Matt Force. <laughs> it is like a Rat King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah our tails are gathered well, together. Uh, I think you mean a Matt King in that oh. situation. Oh. oh. It's a good one. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We can't. That's all the jokes. We can't top that. We can't top that. All right. So, uh, it's been like two, three, maybe even longer weeks since we've actually played. I think we did level up last time. Had a lot of life going on. Yeah. A lot of no, life. we didn't. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, I did. I sure you did. did. Don't right. lie to us. Uh, but what okay. happened last time was that uh, you guys, well, the party snuck up. All, all I know is quote, you, these guys killed a dude. That's true. <laughs> uh, they quote unquote snuck into the uh, Bears Roar hideout, the Crown's Miss Casino, and the sneaking ended up in a total bar brawl slash fight that then ended up with them murdering the uh, leader of the Bears Roar gang, Castal, because he had crazy mind control powers, and no one really mm-hmm. wanted to deal with that. It was a totally gritty street execution. Actually, it was. It was just like the guy was on the ground, like groveling, and then Depp just kind of like casually shot him in the head, and then they walked off. I didn't think he was groveling. I thought he was just kind of there. Uh, well, I don't think he was groveling. That's true. He's more like just kind of on the ground. But in any case... Uh, he would have been groveling if he wasn't knocked out. <laughs> Probably would have He killed an unconscious guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. it was cold-blooded. <laughs> He's got mind control powers! Cold-blooded! Cold-blooded! Also, blooded. Depp doesn't technically have blood. And if he yeah. did, it would be cold, so... That's true. Does, cold cold, cold lubricated. <laughs> did you just say uh, he doesn't have blood? No, he doesn't have blood. He's a robot. He's, he's a robot. Oh, you mean Depp. Yeah, Depp. I thought you yeah. meant the dude we killed. And I'm no, like, he, well, he, he doesn't have blood, blood anymore. Did I fall <laughs> asleep? <laughs> I thought you meant Johnny really Depp. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Depp doesn't have, have he, he doesn't have blood. It yeah, he's just a marionette controlled by that guy whose films he's always in. Tim Burton? <laughs> yeah, that's the donger. <laughs> uh, the char- like- he played a character who didn't have blood in Edward Scissorhands. That's true. I feel like yeah. he only showed up in Tim Burton movies so much because Helena Bonham Carter loved threesomes. <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe so, maybe so. Anyway, uh, before Depp splattered his brains all over the wall, uh, Moktesh read those brains in order to uh, understand where the... or ascertain where the money was that they were supposed to recover. They did that. Right. Uh, you got the money, and you recovered the girl. The... Uh, uh, not quite incognito uh, Lady DeCaneth, and you made your way back to wherever you agreed to meet Revo, probably his office. And, uh, well, Revo wasn't pleased. 
he specifically told you not to get involved with those people and try to keep a low profile. And you did the exact opposite of that. A lot of people saw you, you know, in that area fighting. And most assuredly, you are now linked to the death of Castal, if anyone did he, cared. Did he call us loose cannons? <laughs> <laughs> Handed uh, your benches and wooden guns. You're off the case. You're off your case, <laughs> chief. He gave you a sound talking to, in any case, and yes, loose cannons may have been mentioned. Uh, eventually, though, what transpired was the Lady DeCanth woke up. Um, she didn't seem all that displeased with, you know, getting rid of an asshole like Castle, even though she expressed it in vulgar language and generally being dismissive of people. Uh, ultimately, she was thankful. Uh, she took the money, but then paid you out of her own uh, dragon-marked wallet. So you got your, your funds, which are totally meaningless. So the aesthetic. wallet has a dragon mark? Y- yes. <laughs> yes, it's it does. It's a pretty fancy it's wallet. It's going to mind control us. <laughs> it, was no. made, it was made from the skin of somebody with a dragon mark. So it, it now has a dragon mark on it. <laughs> Damn, no. Well, that's actually insane enough to be a thing that could happen in Eberron. <laughs> well, you know, well, it's, money is the root of all evil. So the dragon mark allows, you know, maybe it's an aberrant dragon mark. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, but you got your money, uh, and then, well, Revo basically was trying to usher you out the door almost exactly at that moment and trying to get you out of Sharn because, well, there's going to be some repercussions, and he thought it best not that you not be here, and as we agreed last session, that uh, you pretty much agreed with him. Yeah, we're cheesing it. Cheesing it. So Revo has a place for you to be. Uh, there's a friend of his, a member of the Aurum, who is a society of rich people, basically. Uh, he's sending you to this dude, and, like, as he's, like, shoving you out the door, and, like, handing you, uh, tickets to the lightning rail, he's, like, explaining it kind of briefly in that, uh, he had this job for you anyway, so just leave now. (laughs) Mm. And, uh, yeah. So, that's what you're doing, apparently. Okay. That's fine. This is fine. Dad's angry at us. I didn't <laughs> kill anybody. He's Brooks especially angry shows at up you. the next day and just like shrugs. Hey guys, what happened? Wow. <laughs> killed a man to watch him bleed. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Rook would have killed him anyway. But he didn't. He wasn't involved in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> he was now, really Rook, asking Rook was for it. The being aberrant and all. Yeah, that's true. He is—he was an aberrant dragon mark holder. Those are, those are bad. It may have pissed off certain parties, though. Well, so, maybe uh, some parties deserve to have some piss taken out of them. <laughs> that's how true. your biologicals work, right? <laughs> not, not, not quite. No. <laughs> so you're saying you want to take his piss right off? <laughs> That was the general thrust of my statement. Now we're talking. No. Well, so. didn't they in fact take that guy's face right off when his head exploded? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah or at least uh, broke it down into smaller parts. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good times. Mm-hmm. So uh, this person that Revo is sending you to meet is the Baron Philippe de Tilkin. Tilkin, sorry, from Ondere. Try saying that five times as fast. Baron Philippe Il Turkin. No, I can't do it. I always say Turkin for some reason. I feel like you're about to break into a Sound of Music song. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, uh, it'll take about a week to reach uh, the city of Fairhaven, which is more or less the capital of Bondair. If I remember. Are we going by train? You are, in fact, going by train. Lightning train. Lightning train. And he Ooh, paid for our train rides. Strange deja vu. Yes, because he wants to get us to get the fuck out of town, <laughs> and that's the fastest <laughs> way out. And he's also paid for an all expense meal at a floating restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't reuse plot uh, devices. <laughs> what would you say? Why would you say? That? Uh, and of course, I'm sending you to on dare, not uh, uh, wherever I sent you before. Anyway, uh, off dare, off dare. <laughs> Shout out! Uh, Say it, French A. 
speaking of French, Andere is kind of a sort of a Frenchish country. It's to the north of Breland. Uh, very green, very lush. Uh, primarily known for magic rather than artifice. It um, It's most famous sort of uh, image is that there is a lake, I don't remember the name of it, uh, but it has basically a college of magic floating over it. Oh, the um, Arcana. Uh, Ar- Arcanix. Yeah, Arcanix. It has an X. Yeah. Arcanix, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is the kind of place that Andere is. It just has like a floating college above a lake. That's it. As you uh, do. Indeed. Uh, well, Andere... Wizards. Andere kind of suffered, uh, not the most, because that would be Sire, but they lost a lot of territory in the last war. Uh, they, the most famous split was that now what is known as the Eldine Reaches. It was formerly part of Andere. And the Eldine Reaches, well, basically that was the entire stretch of all farmland in Andere. And they just kind of split from Andere, which kind of screwed Andere. Yeah, I'm saying Andere a lot. Um, but they, uh, during the last war, uh, they left the uh, fields to just be pillaged by bandits and by enemy soldiers, and they did not guard their farms at all. So Elden Reaches uh, just kind of said, you know what, screw this, we're going to break off and do our own thing, and that's what they did. With hookers and, and blackjack. <laughs> uh, mostly orcs and druids. Mostly orcs and druids, yeah. I'm sure there's hookers and blackjacks somewhere, though. Well, there would be. I mean, all those druids. I don't think those druids are really into the, the blackjack so much. Sure they are. Meh. What, what, do they make the cards, what do they make the cards out of? Trees? Real <laughs> hides? Just but entire there's... trees? But... <laughs> you know how you much druids love to gamble. They could use, like, bone dice. Or they could use uh, leaves that they draw so they, on they with berries. dice poker? Yeah, exactly, from uh, Witcher 1 and 2. Yeah. I don't know if it's in 3. It's not. Probably is not. Thanks, they, they play Gwent. Gwent, Gwent, Gwent is in 3 instead. All right, all right. Am I ever going to be able to collect some nudie cards in Witcher no. 3? They replaced it with Gwen, didn't they? They did. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> Carry on. All right, uh, so that is the brief background of Ondera. Uh Fairhaven is their capital city. And basically, when you guys arrive, there is um, you pull up like a week later from out of Sharn, and there is a uh, nicely appointed gentleman there to receive you. Uh, basically, he just ushers you towards the Baron Philippe Ur Tilkins. Why did I write that so weird? Uh, <laughs> you got to sing song it, man. Do I? Baron What's Philippe the best way Tilkins. To get the, yeah. Baron best Philippe way to get the Tilkin. pronunciation down. All right, I will do that from now on. Good. Uh, to his manner, and you're you're graciously welcomed, and basically, it's made uh, known that you are allowed to stay here as long as you like, because the guy kind of you kind of meet the guy uh, when you're shown to the house, but he's only there briefly. He's just just long enough to kind of like greet you with like really loud voice saying, Oh yes, yes, yes. Revo and I have been friends for, for uh, years, years. You're all welcome here. Uh, my butler will show you to your rooms. Uh, feel free to make yourselves at home. And then he's off and you don't see him again for a couple of days. Well, nice meeting you. <laughs> I love that. I one. get it. Let's make it a comeback. Well, uh, we got some rooms. I don't need much space, but I'm sure the rest of you do for your expelling of gases and whatnot. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, hmm. that's what we do. Oh, I, don't. I believe this room shall be suitable for my purposes. It's got a nice rock from the sun on. <laughs> well, since, <laughs> since, since, Gyrus, since Gyrus was told to make himself at home, he will begin making a traditional dragonborn brooding chamber in his, uh, in his room. <laughs> it's Which going a little too far. A rock, yes. It's d- definitely going too far. The, the butlers <laughs> and the, definitely the maid will have something to say about that. <laughs> Depp opens and like a his... linen closet and just steps inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured he was going to do. This will do nicely. <laughs> uh, 
the rooms are really nice, by the way. They're uh, befitting of a man with a barren title. Uh, large beds. Uh, the wait staff is like 24-7. It's pretty nice, actually. Well, good. Finally, we can relax. Definitely so. No one tries to kill you for several days. Nobody tried. To, we were on a Hooray. train. We were on a lightning rail for a week, and nothing weird happened. I know yeah, it's I weird. Was, I was really expecting something to happen. Look, I can't have a thing happen on a lightning rail every time you use one. Can you? Can't you? I mean, <laughs> I've I've spent years here stories about this infamous lightning rail incident. There's still time. There's no. time. Look, no. you cross you cross That's all weird. over the place on lightning rails. <laughs> Magic is gone. I figure <laughs> would, would, back when Mark Tesh was doing his thing before all of this, would he have just been riding around on a horse? Sure. I mean, traditional I mean, he, modes of conveyance are totally in stuff. Yeah, yeah there are he, horses and stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah, there are still people who ride around on horses now. Guys. Lightning rail is not cheap, also. Yeah, he probably no, couldn't have afforded not. the lightning rail, so he probably spent the first day marveling at everything. Yeah. I can actually it's not look as up expensive the as, those, as those filthy gnomish orders. The what? Oh, no, wait, no, it's... No, the gnomes are the communication thing. Yeah, they're, they're communication. Um, yeah. Gyrax is mildly impressed, but insists that the Argonessin lightning rail is better. <laughs> of course, I don't know that they, they have. One. I don't think they I, have lightning rail. I, I, I know he's going to he say meant, it anyways. He meant lightning rod. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a metal rod in the middle of their village. Yeah, <laughs> people like to ride. That was actually that no was actually Ga- that was actually Gyrax's job to be the lightning rod. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, someone has done this, and while this isn't quite the price, um, standard fare, which is what you guys got for the lightning rail trip, is five hundred gold pieces per. Jeez, he really wanted this gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but eventually, after you guys have settled in and have spent a couple days relaxing, uh, the Baron does return to his manor, and he basically sends a butler or maid to each of your rooms to try to collect you to meet with him. The maid finds Moktesh naked. Well, I'm sure that he's very thrilled to see <laughs> Moktesh in the nude. As well he should be. <laughs> yes. Very, very good, Moktesh. sir. Moktesh hasn't put clothes on the entire time he's been here. That's true. <laughs> he took his they clothes said, uh, right to make off. At home. <laughs> <laughs> so we were sent out here to do something for this guy. He greets us and then disappears for half a week. He's yeah, a baron. Pretty. He's a busy guy. He's busy. He doesn't even give us our job or nothing. No, he no. lets you relax at this place for a couple days. So we just spent like the last three days eating cake. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. No, pretty good know. cake too. It's not. It's not dry at all. I send us, gonna they come send back. us this farm upstate where we can run with the other adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> I should note that when they t- come to collect you, it's like the dead of night. They probably wake you up out of sleep. So it's then, Moktash really is naked. Yeah, we're yeah, all, 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 all naked at this point. So exactly. We go to meet him. And Gyrax was hanging upside down. Yeah, where dragonborn sleep? Where where does the the he the he maid take us? <laughs> to uh, just the a maid. <laughs> I think it's a butler, isn't it? No, it it's can a still butler. just be a maid. There's butlers and maid. I think yeah. it's a butler. A but butler is a very specific. <laughs> it's a different thing from a maid. He probably would have <laughs> sent the butler, not a maid. <laughs> Let's see how it all at once. Anyway, Let's go you're, see him. you're collected by something of a nature. Ah. The weight staff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a floating brain. <laughs> we uh, write the narrative. It's a mind flayer writing in a holder. It. <laughs> so we're collected, <laughs> it's by, we're collected by the house staff. House Dead staff, of night. Yeah. Dead of the night. You're brought to the Baron Philippe Tertelkin. Uh, his his uh, office. It's a very nice, uh, actually it's more of a study, 
very lots of books. Uh, very nice desk. He's probably wearing, uh, you know, like a robe or something like that. Very dressed down. He offers you all a fine cognac. Ooh. I can't pronounce it. Or did I? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, cool. Cognac is about right. Cognac, yeah. He seems to be buttering you up a little bit. As Ooh. You see. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Literally gets the knife out. Just slathering us. <laughs> oh. Really? He's way oh, over the into nipples. the armpits. <laughs> But no, it's really nice uh, cognac. Probably offers Depp a cigar. Made out of his own people. Can... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Can, can, Depp, cigar. can Depp even smoke? Depp has uh, no that mouth. dangerous? He's made he of just, wood. He has the cognac and, and he just scream. holds the glass up to his face and like tips it and just the cognac he dribbles down. <laughs> wow, that was delicious. Well, you know, he's made of wood, so it'll absorb the cognac and age to a fine vintage within him. (laughs) It has a delicious bouquet. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what can we do for you, sir? I'm told that you, well, collect things or retrieve things, perhaps. Yes, we reclaim things. I see. In some cases, we even liberate them. Excellent. Revo has uh, talked you up some, and I admit that while the recent uh, troubles are a bit... Why am I my beagle barking? There's not a beagle in this scene, by the way. Well, I'm I out. think there is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Baron recent troubles... Baron Duckin's uh, beagle starts barking, and uh, it's all great. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Baron Philippe Turducken. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be his name from now on. It doesn't even matter that it's Irritilkin. Anyway. Well, I'm sure that's what Frazzle Fuse will call him. Oh, wait. Are we on a map or something? No. Not really. Oh, because I'm... We're, we're still on that, like, landing page, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Karen. So, I haven't changed it. I guess I could change it to the... Uh, Corvair map. You you mentioned token, and I got all like token. What token? No, Ur token. That's his name. Oh, Baron Philippe token. Why did you make Baron such Philippe a hard name? name? I don't know. Baron Philippe Il Turkin. I feel like it needs Ur- a couple Tilken. more names. Ur Tilkin. Baron Philippe Ur Tilk. No. More names. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yabba dabba dabba. In any case. What just happened? And it goes on like this. In any case. Uh, yes, the Baron... Uh, we, we, we've broken all immersion now. It's it's done. Baron for leap. Er, Turkin, Birkin. <laughs> He's got a Merkin? What? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, in any case, I require your services in, uh, to reclaim something of mine up in Thalios. That's a bit of a trick. A little bit of one. I would, of course, pay your way. Um, any expenses that you incur are mine. You see, the item I have uh, misplaced is of great importance to my family. And it has originally, you see, our family was based in Thalios, but as you know, of course, wink, wink, Hollywood dialogue. Uh, uh, Thalios, well, it doesn't belong to Thrain, but now it does. During the last war, I had to flee my home and had to leave many possessions behind, one of which was the item in question. And after some research, I found that, well, it's in possession of a certain person. All right. So what's the item, and who is this certain person? Better not be a rug. A what? A rug. Rug. Uh, he says the, well, the item is called the Jewel of Fire. It is a, yeah, sure. The, the Baron stops. Right, stops right now and just kind of points at the map. <laughs> Where's the post? Right here. A map you conveniently on the wall. Ah, okay. If you can, yeah, yeah we can see it. it. We can see it. Okay. 
And Fairhaven, if you're wondering, is right here. All right. Thank you. Indeed. So, uh, the Jewel of Fire. It is a perfect round red ruby. There is simply no flaw in it. Uh, it is worth quite, quite a lot of money. And, of course, I can trust in your discretion in returning it, I assume. Revo did speak highly of your... Well, if not your discretion, then your ability to get the job done. We will As certainly get the job right. done. Picturing <laughs> swimming pool and bikini <laughs> goblins. <laughs> well, without reputation, what are we? Savages, of course. Oh, I feel like Frasmus is going to get outvoted when it comes time. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is this certain individual, then? <clears throat> I'm afraid it is Archbishop Sogar Darsnu. Oh, I don't. I didn't even make it. this one up. Uh, like, Di- Gyrax has a complete lack of reaction to that. <laughs> uh, he doesn't understand. He doesn't know yeah. about these monkey religions. <laughs> uh, just to let you guys know, uh, Thrain is most well known for. Uh, the Silver Flame religion. It's a theocracy. It's a theocracy. And uh, the Silver Flame, uh, they're very they're very much like uh, Catholic, uh, uh, Catholic Church, except for that they have kind of two divisions. They have the evangelical side and then the side that like purges shifters and changelings. And they have a very hard cool line side. view. <laughs> they have a very hard line view of uh, destroying evil as they see it, and they also want to get rid of corruption. It's a very purifying sort of deal. Uh, they use fire! They, mm. they definitely use fire. So my mm. Frazzle mm. Fuse is getting all frisky over there. I, I mean, it's not, it's not all bad. I mean, they do have a message of compassion, and, you know, they, they tend to view human corruption, or, well, human, quote-unquote, um, as being not integral to humans or elves, or, you know, any, any sort of race. It's basically, there are things that are evil in this world, which are shifters and changelings. <clears throat> but, uh... And aberrant. And aberrants, of course. And basically anything that's like that. But, uh... Otherwise, they believe that uh, evil behavior in, like, men or women is just uh, learned behavior, and they can be taught otherwise. Possibly with fire. Well, that's my... It's really nice a enough. teaching tool, fire. Indeed. Uh, so yes, Archbishop Darisnu. I, d- I swear I didn't make that one up. I got it from the, the wiki. <laughs> uh, Darisnu <laughs> has uh, the Jewel of Fire. And, well, the uh, Baron Philippe will uh, explain that currently Darisnu is the uh, basically the governor of Thalios at the moment. So basically, he's asking you to go into a foreign-occupied city and steal a jewel from the governor of that city. Who is an archbishop oh. of the Church of the Silver Flame, the most yeah. powerful religion on Corvair. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Sounds like fun. <laughs> All right. You'll do it then. He actually sounds kind of surprised. Yeah. That's what we do. We reclaim sure. things. We're the reclaimers. Wonderful. <laughs> now, you'll forgive me if I sound untrusting, simply that the jewel's worth cannot be overstated. However, the worth of the jewel is so much that it is difficult to find a buyer for it. Uh, Basically, well, I'll spare you the details of how I lost it, but uh, there is no way that it could be paid for in coin, you understand. So, just to make certain that it does end up in my possession once more, I am prepared to offer you a tidy sum. Hmm. Sounds pretty neat. And tidy. Um, We do prefer money tidy. How much are we talking here? A tidy sum, he just said. Jeez. (laughs) This is a system where money doesn't matter, so there's no point (laughs) in giving us specifics. He's just going to keep it vague. He's going to write a number on a piece of paper and fold it <laughs> and slide it at us. We're going to crowd around all of our eyebrows and they're going to lift simultaneously. That's exactly <laughs> what happens. Uh, Even Gyrax and he doesn't have eyebrows? Yeah. 
depth. He's just for some reason wearing cylinders, Groucho Marx glasses. I love it. <laughs> Make a loud whistling noise. Depp, Depp lifts his hands, uses his index fingers to be his eyebrows. And goes, mm-hmm. Followed by, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs>